Hi guys, welcome to the third section of this course, Expressing Anonymous Methods with Lambda Expressions. Let's have an overview of this section. In this section, we'll start off with getting to know anonymous methods and Lambda Expressions. Then we would learn subscribing for events using Lambda Expressions. Lastly, we would see the advantages of using Lambda Expressions in functional programming. Now we move on to the first video of this section, Getting to Know Anonymous Methods. In this video, we are going to take a look at creating anonymous methods using anonymous method as an argument, writing anonymous methods, and study some of its advantages. In the previous section, we already discussed how to declare a delegate using named methods. When using named methods, we have to create a method first, give it a name, and then associate it with the delegate. To refresh our memory, a simple delegate declaration associated with a named method is provided like this. From this code, first, we simply create a delegate data type named del delegate and we also create a method named do something after we have named a method we can associate the delegate with the method here we associate del delegate d to do something method fortunately anonymous methods were announced in c sharp 2.0 to ease the use of delegates they provide us with a shortcut to create a simple and short method that will be used once the syntax to declare an anonymous method looks like this i'll give you the explanation for each element of the anonymous method syntax First, delegate, the keyword we need in order to initialize a delegate. Parameters, the list of parameters that the method we assign to this delegate takes. Implementation, the code that will be executed by the method. It can apply a return statement if the method needs to return a value. We can see that an anonymous method is a method that doesn't have a name. We just need to define the arguments and the implementation of the method. Let's learn creating anonymous methods. For further discussion, I've created a simple anonymous method which can be found in the project simple anonymous methods proj. We now have an anonymous method. We assign to delegate display message delegate. We create the display message delegate using the func built-in delegate, which takes only one string argument and return string value as well. If we need to run the anonymous method, we can invoke the delegate in our main function. We invoke the anonymous method by calling delegate name display message delegate. Now let's test the code. We will get the output on the console, a simple anonymous method sample. Cool. We have successfully invoked the anonymous method by calling the delegate name. Now let's go back to the previous section to use some code from there and refactor it to an anonymous method. We are going to refactor the code of simple delegates.csproj. Here you can see the code of simple delegates. Now I'll show you the refracted code. This highlighted code snippet is the declaration of the anonymous methods. We have two anonymous methods in this code. We also use the func delegate, the built-in delegate we discussed in the previous section. We invoke the method in our main function. We can invoke the delegate name like this, as you can see. If we run this project, we will get an output like this. So we'll get i equal to two and j equal to six. Compared to the code in the simple delegates.csproj, our code in the simple delegates refractor.csproj project becomes simpler and shorter since we don't need to declare the delegate. The delegate is declared simultaneously with the creation of an anonymous method, such as this code snippet. Here's the code we used in our previous section, named simpledelegates.csproj. Using anonymous delegation, we have simplified our code compared to the code produced in the previous section. Now using an anonymous method as an argument, we have now executed an anonymous method. However, the anonymous method can also be passed to a method as a parameter. Look at this code which we can find the anonymous method as argument.csproj project. First, we have a method named isMultipleOf7 in this project. The method will be passed to the argument of this method called findMultipleOf7. Then, we call the findMultipleOf7 method in print result. We can also define the list variable to be based to the findMultipleOf7 method argument. If we invoke the print result method, we will get this output. The multiple of 7 in the number list is 91. Cool. The goal of the program is to find a number that is multiplied by 7 from the number list. And since 91 is the first number that meets this criteria, the find multiple of 7 method returns that number. You can see here, 91 is the first number meeting the criteria. Inside the find multiple of 7 method, we can find the find method passing the is multiple of 7 method as an argument. We can, if we want, replace this find multiple of 7 method with this anonymous method. We now have to find multiple of 7 lambda method, which invokes the find method, and passes the anonymous method to the method argument. 
Since we have passed the anonymous method, we don't need to find the multiple of 7 method any longer. We can invoke the find multiple of 7 lambda method in the print result lambda method, as you can see. Now we'll run the print result lambda method. But first, in our main function, we have to remove comment print result lambda and comment print result function. Time for testing print result lambda. We will get this output upon execution. As we can see, we still retrieve 91 as a result of number multiplication of 7. However, we have successfully passed the anonymous method as the method argument. Let's see some guidance for writing anonymous methods. Some things should be kept in mind when writing anonymous methods. An anonymous method has no return type in its declaration. Consider this code snippet. In the delegate declaration, we don't find the return type, although we find the return keyword in the method implementation. This is because the compiler infers the return type based on the delegate signature. We have to match the declaration of the delegate signature with the method's argument. This will be similar to assigning a named method to a delegate. Take a look at this code. In this code snippet, we declare a delegate that takes two int arguments and returns an int value. Refer to the delegate signature. We use the same signature when declaring the anonymous method. We are not allowed to declare variables whose names conflict with the variables of the anonymous method that is declared. See this code snippet as an example. We will never be able to compile this code since we declare the variable i, twice both in conflict method and in act delegate. Lastly, let's see some advantages of the anonymous methods. Since we don't attach a name to a method, they are a good solution if we want to invoke the method only once. We can write the code in place rather than writing the logic in other parts of a code. We don't need to declare the return type of the anonymous method since it will be inferred from the signature of the delegate that is assigned to the anonymous method. We can access local variables of the outer method from the anonymous method. Outer variables are captured inside the anonymous method. We don't need to create a name method of snippets of logic that are invoked once. That's about it. In this video, we got to know anonymous methods. Great!